Hey guys, Justin Morgan here. Want to cover a re-release of a tool that AES Wave has put out. This is the third gen of the U-Test breakout lead set. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over everything that's inside the kit and then we're going to cover some use of each item. Uh, kind of show you everything this tool kit will do. Uh, before we get started, as always, big thank you to AES Wave for not only supporting these videos but also supporting technicians industry-wide uh, through training, uh, knowledge base and putting out good tools for us to get to help us do our job. So make sure you guys check out their website. They're always coming out with new stuff and we're going to go ahead and set up. We're going to cover everything in the toolkit then we'll go through the uses. Alright guys, so we're going to do a basic overview of everything that's in the kit. Uh, as soon as you open the kit, the first thing you'll notice is you have this white card. This card is a parts list. It's going to give you a description and a picture of everything that's included in the kit, including all the terminals. Um, all the adapters, all the back probes, uh, the leads, uh, amp loops. So we're going to go ahead and cover everything. I'm going to start with the actual uh, terminal breakouts themselves. So you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of different colors here. All the colors of the lead themselves, if the colors match, that means it's a matching set, male and female, for one size. So the blue here, this is the Micro 50. The orange is the Micro 64, so on and so on. So we have no repeating colors. That, that's just going to allow you to try to keep organization and also identify the correct mating terminal in case you have multiples out because you're doing a big breakout on something. You'll also notice that the banana jacks at the top of each of the terminal adapters, you have red and you have black. If it's red, it's a flat terminal. If it's black, it's a round terminal. So we'll just cover a list of everything that's included as far as terminals, starting with the flat. You have micro 50, micro 64, a flat 0.8 millimeter, 1.2 millimeter, 2.0, 2.5, 3, 5.0, and 6.0 millimeter in the flat terminals. In the round terminals, you have a 1.5, 2.0, 3.5, and 4.0. And that does cover some bullet style as well as Deutsch style. Uh, moving further down into the bottom here, we have some amp loops. These amp loops are uh, really, really nice. Uh, not only can you put the amp loop in so you can do current ramping, but you also have a power tap here that will allow you to measure voltage or use this for uh, maybe if you want to hook your power probe up or you need a constant source of power to uh, run some other like relay tester or uh, pulse width modulation device. You have that. On the back of the fuse block itself, you have an LED here that will light up letting you know that the circuit has been turned on um, in case it's a uh, not a constant power fuse. And then we have the actual where you're going to put your fuse in after you pull it out of the fuse block. So you have three sizes. You have a maxi which has a, a current limit of 60 amps. You have ATC, which is your standard blade size. Um, same features. This has a maximum amperage of 40 amps. And then we have the mini ATC, which has a maximum current of 30 amps. Again, all of them have the banana adapter for power tap, and then you have the loop that you can use for current ramping. And we'll cover that in more detail in just a minute. Moving on to the wire piercers, you have a black and a red. These have been recently upgraded, um, and I'll zoom in so you can really see it. But now there is a tube inside of the shaft here that as you run the thumb wheel to increase tension, it's going to uh, contact the wire first and make sure that it's centered in the V-groove in the bottom of the hook. Then the, the piercing probe will actually make contact with the wire. And that's just going to help you stabilize and, and get a first shot every time. We have our DMM probe leads. These are uh, category 3 and cat 6. So cat 3 we know is we can go up to a thousand volts. That's going to allow you to use these with the cover on them and I'll show you the cover removed in a second but with the cover on you can use these for hybrid battery testing. Um, the cap just comes right off and what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to see if I can get it to zoom in but this tip is a multi-tip so you have a standard DMM you know kind of sharp probe you also have a modified banana adapter here so that if you wanted to, you could take a back probe pin, 
attach on the probe and now we have a little bit of an extension when we're trying to back probe into a connector so that if you have tight access now we can aim and push and that will allow you to get a little bit of leverage. You can also put the other adapters on there. It just basically allows you to use this as a wand if you wanted to for extensions. Um, you can also hook the two probes together if you wanted to. If you needed something to kind of reach down and touch, like if you're trying to get to the back of an alternator and the battery stud's not really uh, accessible without disassembly, what you could do is you can hook them together and now I have, I kind of have a solid extension lead that I can reach down and touch things with which that's a really nice feature. I like that a lot. Next thing in our kit, we have a variable resistor. The variable resistor goes from 0 to 10,000 ohms, and it is 5% tolerance. And you can use this to mimic level sensors. You can also put it in line for virtual range sensors, so you have a power, a ground, and an out. So if you wanted to you know, mimic a TPMS sensor or something, you can do it. There is a lock on here. It's a little slide lock. So once you set it, you can lock it if you want it fixed, or you can just use it as a sweep. Um, you can hook this up. If you take the black and the blue, you can hook it to your meter, and you can set up the resistance if you wanted a fixed value. You know, just go ahead and hook this into your meter and dial up whatever we need. Once you have it set, then you can throw the lock. You can kind of see the numbers moving there. I mean, it has a huge range. This one's maxed all the way out at 10, so we're going to back it down. I'm going to try to set it to a couple hundred. So we'll set that at 560. It's locked. So now we have a good solid number. Again, just giving you an idea of what everything is and, and how we can use it. The next component we have here in the bottom is we have some back probe pins with extensions on them. They're nice. The back probes actually have on the needle themselves uh, a fair amount of insulation. So if you back probe and you're using both of them, you don't have to worry about uninsulated probes touching each other, shorting them out and melting these because these, these aren't going to handle any current. So any kind of short these things are going to melt. Also, if you're trying to use this to apply power to something, not a great idea because that, that needle is going to melt right in half. If you were to try to hook this to your power probe and apply power to something, I would say anything more than a couple hundred milliamps and, and this thing's going to melt. Um, it's just not designed for that. This is just for voltage measurement. So always remember that, guys. Back probe's not meant for applying current. They're just for vol voltage measurements. The next thing we have is we have our standard alligators. You have a red and a black. Um, pretty common. They have a pretty good opening, about an inch. So this definitely will, will get onto almost every battery cable, battery terminal you want if you needed something for that, voltage drop measurement, whatever it may be. Uh, moving up from there, we do have two yellow. They look like Y splitters, but this is actually an airbag simulator. Okay, so you get two of these. There's a little cap on the top. You can remove it. You'll see that there's two little holes there. That is actually for a resistor to go into, so you can use this as an airbag simulator. The kit itself does come with a set of resistors in this little plastic case, and you get uh, three different values and two of each, so you could set these up however you wanted to. Your values are 2 ohms, 2.2, and 2.7, which is going to cover about every standard airbag component you're going to run into, with the exception of maybe a seatbelt buckle switch. But pretty much all your pyrotechnic devices that you're going to want to substitute this for are going to be within that range. And of course, if you find one that's not, you can always just add in your own resistors. So this is nice. Inside this other little elastic compartment here, you have two sets of leads, red and black. They're both four feet long. We'll go with the standard set first. The standard set is male-to-male -male banana, straight, okay? And it's going to allow you to use every adapter in this kit with these. Okay? And again, they're four foot long. We have these nice little cord wraps. Keep them nice and neat. The second set of leads that we have are male and female. 
So what that will allow us to do is, is if you have a different adapter from say another kit or something you already own, you can attach it there. You can also use this for extending your leads. So I can take the two different black style leads, plug them in together, and now I have eight foot of lead. Well that's great if I'm trying to do a voltage drop measurement or something, or I'm trying to test drive and monitor a circuit, I now have eight foot of lead. That's great. Also in our kit, you get a small uh, rubber tipped S hook, which you can hang those leads with. If you're using this to, you know, maybe you're using this kit for an extension on your U scope for test drive or something, or just to keep them up off the engine while you're testing in the on the bay. This is a great little hook. It, you know, you just hook your leads and they'll hold them up. What I'm going to do now is we're going to change position and I'm going to demonstrate some of the stuff you can do with these. Also, the Micro 50 and Micro 64 additions to this kit and some of the advantages to the way that these pin leads are actually built that is superior to other kits that may be out there. All right, so we're going to cover a couple of things you can do with this kit that are really, really cool. To start with, I have a late model engine control module here. This has 1.2 millimeter terminals for most of the connectors on here. So we'll zoom in, you can kind of see everything that's going on. There's a lot of pins in here. So what I really wanted to show you is the fact the end of these terminals are so small because there's no knurling or reinforcement here you can actually stack these into a connector that has virtually no space in it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have a male and a female connector here. I'm going to go ahead and open it. There's the male. There's the female. So we're going to demonstrate this with the female using the Micro 50. Now, this is not a very big terminal. This is four wires. So let me show you what we can do here. If I wanted to make my own lead, I can take all four and physically stack them in here with little to no effort. You can see, I have all four in there with no problem. And this connector is very, very small. But because of the way that George designed these, you can fit all of them in there. Now, there's another piece in this kit that I didn't really cover, that now is the time to do it. So if you wanted to make your own breakout lead set, you'll notice that we have four adapters here. Three red and one black. There is actually a screw that holds all these together so you can separate them and use them individually, two, three, all, or all four at one time. What this allows you to do is make your own breakout lead set. Okay, If I needed to be able to current ramp wires and have a tap to do signal with my meter or with my uh, lab scope, I can plug right in here with my leads for my scope or my meter and I can individually go around each one of these wires with an amp clamp to get a current measurement if I wanted to. And we're just going to keep stacking all these and I'll show you how we make this breakout adapter. Because this is one of the main advantages of this kit. So there we have all eight wires. Now I can take these and I can start putting them into the female side. As I see fit, and that allows me to go ahead and have both sides of the harness hooked to my breakout lead. I have a test point right here that I know is good contact and it allows me to, you know, also check pin fitment on these. You know, you can do your drag test just like this, right? And that lets us know that the connector is good. 
and then we can get into our, our actual measurements and like I said, we can take amp probe, our current probe, and just hook it around one of the wires. This is an awesome, awesome feature of this kit. And like I said, there's a little plastic screw right here that you can screw it out. With little effort. And we can take each one of these off if we wanted to. We're going to go ahead and unscrew these. And now we have four individual. And there's your screw. It's an 832. You can replace it uh, with a metal one if you want to. It's kind of hard to see, but the only adapter that has the threaded insert in it is the black one. So if you're going to use two or three, you need to make sure the black is on the end because that's actually what the screw is threading into. Um, touched on it there for a second, but something else you can do is you can do pin drag, um, which is, you know, a great test. We have a engine control harness right here, so we're going to look at this. We're going to say this is the .8 millimeter. We can slide our pin in, and we can see that we have good tension. All right. So that lets you know you have a solid connection here. We don't have any fretted or stretched terminals, which is a huge problem we see in the industry now. Um, this feature right here with being able to stack all these terminals in this very small connector, this is what sets this kit separate from everybody else because we don't have this big knurling like we do on the end where the banana adapter is. So, you know, it's got the reinforcement here. When you have a big bulky connector like this, you can't stack them in like you can on this. So I feel like it bears mentioning when you are removing the actual terminal end, try to get as low as you can and don't pull on the wire because, again, there's, there's not much reinforcement there. They're crimped very well, but you don't want to pull on the, on the wire. Try to pull on the terminal. That's just going to prolong the life of them. We'll move this out of the way. The amp loops that we have, this is a fuse box that I have out of another car. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this. You remember I was telling you that the ends that are actually going to go into the fuse cavity on the fuse box, they're pretty narrow. The, most of the fat's been taken off of them, so they'll fit into tight fuse boxes like this. So we're just going to go ahead and plug that in to our fuse box. We're going to take our fuse that we pulled out of that cavity and we're going to put it into the actual amp loop itself. And then now we can take our low amp clamp or high amp clamp and put it on there and go ahead and do some measuring. And then if we need to, we can uh, put a test lead here on this power tap and we can monitor voltage or we can use the voltage for something else. Like I said, if you needed to power something, low draw, you can definitely do that right here. It's a good breakout lead. If you don't have a power source under the hood, pull a fuse, put this in, and then you can check your voltage here and then if you needed a reference voltage, you've got it right here for a voltage drop, a power probe, you know, a test light, multimeter, whatever the case is. I'm going to see if I can get this to zoom in. Okay, there is the little tube that I was mentioning inside. There. You can see it moving right now, so I'm going to screw it out. And it's just a hollow tube. And what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that the wire is pushed all the way down of the hook. Once it's pushed all the way out, then the piercing probe will start coming out. Now there's a little bit more effort on this than you're used to on other probes, so just kind of play with it and get used to it. Um, George has a great suggestion, which is 
have your scope or your meter hooked up to this probe as you are piercing. That way you can watch the signal um, on the screen and know that you've made contact so you don't over pierce and you also make sure that you did in fact pierce the wire. So this is the same on the red and the black. That little tube there is just going to help you center the wire and hopefully get you a better contact first time. So here's our airbag connector. If we want to do an airbag simulator, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my airbag simulator. I'm going to pick my resistor. Right? I'm going to verify it is the value that I want to use. Okay, so I have the resistor stuck in there. So now I'm going to put it in my meter. Turn the meter on, and it's going to say 2.3, 2.2. It's going to say 2.3. So this is a this is a 2.2 resistor. Now to make sure it's secure, we're going to put the cap back on. All right, and then we're going to pick our two adapters that we need. So we're going to look at this terminal. Um, I suspect this is a 0.8. It is. So we're going to take our 2.8 terminal adapters. And we're going to substitute an airbag device. Right. So now we've done our drag test right here by putting these in and pulling them out. We have our substitute device. We're able to clear the fault. The fault's gone. Awesome. We know that the wiring and our substitute device is good, which that would kind of lead us to the fact that whatever we were substituting is bad. You know, the airbag, the pyrotechnic and seat belt, battery safety terminal, whatever it is. This is a great feature, and you get two of these because a lot of times, especially dealing with seat belts, you'll have more than one part of the seat belt that you maybe want to eliminate. Sometimes the codes aren't very definitive as to whether it is uh, the pretensioner on the belt or the pretensioner on the buckle itself. So if you wanted to eliminate both or you had multiple faults, we could, we could test two circuits at one time on the airbag system. So that's a really great feature. This is an ignition coil off a of BMW that we demonstrated our back probe extension with this lead here. So we have our test probe lead for DMM. You know, if we pull that Cat 3 shield off, then we can put other stuff on there. You know, just, you can use it for whatever you want to, but those are my two favorite things is I have something that's kind of tough to get to and I don't want to unplug a lot of stuff to get to it. So I just put a back probe on the tip and that just kind of gives me some some room to try to get to stuff. So I can just, and we're in. And then like I said, if, if for some reason I was trying to do a voltage drop on an alternator connection and I can't get to it, you know, you can make an extension probe and just kind of reach down in there with our wire. So we'll take our, our lead here, kind of mimic this up a little bit. So now I have the ability to really get in there. It gives me another, you know, eight, 10 inches of, of space to try to touch the back of that alternator and then have my other lead on the battery so I can do a, a, a very good voltage drop measurement on my alternator for charging system. Just some ideas to help you guys see what all we can do out of this kit. All right, guys, so that's the end of the uh, demonstration of all the devices. Uh, you know, we've gone through everything that's in the kit as well as some of their uses. Obviously, there's more things you can do with this kit. Your imagination's kind of the limitation there. So, if you have any questions about this, definitely contact AES Wave. I'm more than happy to try to answer questions anybody may have. Um, I recommend everybody have this kit, whether it's just doing drag testing or whether you need breakout leads or whether you need variable resistor and airbag simulators. This is a good all-around kit. Um, you, you put it in conjunction with a meter or even a U-scope or a four-channel scope, this is really going to make your job easier. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, 
like, comment, um, any questions, contact AES Wave or try to reach out to me. Thank you.